Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for September 17th, 2019. Well, yesterday was kind of an interesting day, wasn't it? We had <clears throat> one of the biggest one day increases in oil prices in 30 years. And the market just kind of walked through it, um, just took the blow in stride um, like a like a pro fighter and just said, ah, whatever, and kind of shook it off. So what are we looking at here today? Well, first off, we had that little bit of a dip, a little bit of a pullback, but we're facing we're still facing this this high here in the market. Right now, the market is holding up really, really well by comparison. As a matter of fact, if I were to drop a line right across in here we really are holding on to the support level in that price right there here in the diamonds we also have this upward trend so so far the market has really taken this oil fields and the rising oil prices in stride really not having a major effect overall on the market now a few reasons for that might be number one is that <clears throat> because of um, increasing domestic oil production here in the United States, we have less of a dependence on foreign oil, which is kind of muting that blow just a little bit. Also, um, we have um, just this um, overall... Um, a bullish momentum in the market, keeping the keeping things kind of moving to the uh, upside, and holding things up pretty well. We also have the hope, the idea that um, the FOMC could provide us with some interest rate accommodations here on Wednesday, also um, keeping the market pretty strong. Let's keep in mind that it was only back here in June, it was only the rumor of a potential rate cut that brought the market from here all the way up into here before we even had a rate decision. So pretty interesting how the market can move big on those hopes of rate decisions. <clears throat> and that's holding this market up pretty darn well right now overall. So let's watch that pretty closely. If we look at our moving averages in the chart, we can see that our 50 day moving average is all the way down here. And it really wouldn't be that big of a surprise if we need to come back down and test some level of support. Now that's not saying that we have to come all the way back down to the 50. We could come down in this little pullback right in here and, and start right back up on Wednesday. So watch that close. Futures, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of allergy congestion this morning. I apologize. Futures are pointing to just an ever so slightly lower open this morning. We're pretty modestly lower um, this morning. Um, no real major push to the downside and um, bulls are holding in there pretty well on any attack um, on a downside move. So holding up pretty well. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY also just a little slight pullback yesterday. Remember the SPY reached out here the other day printed some all-time new highs in the market, but just was unable to hold that. And then pushing down um, on yesterday's move creates that possibility of this double, double top high. But we still have our trend in play here. We still have support uh, levels below. And as you can see this morning, we have the SPY kind of parking right in here just just modestly lower this morning. I mean, barely lower this morning um, at this moment. Um, they're holding up really, really well overall. So just kind of a modest response, a muted response to this oil field thing. Now that could certainly change if the rhetoric begins to pick up about a retaliatory t attack. Um, on well whoever is responsible right now they're still investigating it that the hard lean is is uh, this was a, an iranian thing and we'll have to wait and see but right now that that um patience 
to um, to not just a, a knee jerk reaction response is also calming the fears of the market here just a little bit. But that could change if there's news that comes out uh, um, that we are moving forward with some kind of a military action. Let's take a look at the Qs. Qs suffering a little bit more here than the other indexes. As you can see, the Qs made that attempt, didn't quite get her done here um, in breaking through that resistance high up there, testing it. And then we have substantially pulled back in that move. Now, the good news in this move right now is so far we're holding the trend. So we're holding the trend. This morning we have a little tiny, teeny tiny bit of bearishness here um, in uh, the morning open, but boy, um, holding up quite well and there's support levels here below that um, are looking pretty solid here at least at the moment if we were to get some kind of surprise news event that could could knock us down in here but so far looking good if we look at our moving averages still holding above our 50-day moving average looking good and notice that our uh, shorter term moving averages are moving up to to uh, provide support to that 50 as well. So if this were to break on down and pull back into here, I don't see that as being a big negative. As a matter of fact, that could be the real positive, the place where we find good uh, buying opportunity. But let's watch that pretty closely. Let's take a look at IWM. IWM continued to hold up in its strength yesterday, tried to make uh, uh, itself um, push push even higher here and this morning it's holding up quite well iwm there seems to be quite a rotation into small caps going on um, iwm is holding up very very well now one of the things i want to always pay attention to is when we have these big long downtrends like this i want to see the stock break through that downtrend and then prove it can hold it as support now it can do that in a couple different ways. It can either pull back and hold it as support and get that bounce off, or it could consolidate sideways holding that support and then show that bullish move over there. So we're gonna to wanna to watch this pretty closely. If we hold above that downtrend, there may be some good opportunities coming in IWM in the near future. Let's take a look at um, the VIX. That VIX is really an interesting chart right now because we're really showing little to no fear in this market, which to me, with all the uncertainty out there, is a bit of a surprise and also a bit of a concern for me because it almost feels like complacency once again because we just don't seem to care what's happening Um um, geopolitically, we don't seem to care what's happening um, overall um, in, in the fact that we have no trade deal and, and really haven't even begun the discussion of um, uh, this re-engagement of trade negotiations. So no fear here in the market really at all. What I would um, suggest is to be really watchful of this level right across here. As you can see, we have kind of a long uh, level of support or resistance that we bounce around in this area pretty, pretty strongly. So if we do see some of that fear, let's watch this area right here for that potential resistance. And then, of course, support, if we continue to sink and fall in that fear, watch for this downtrend area in here to provide a little bit of support but we'll have to wait and see right now boy i gotta tell you they're just uh, the market just doesn't seem to care much about anything uh, just all bullish and that may be just the anticipation of the fomc the fomc um anticipation that we may get a rate cut and maybe future cuts are certainly um um providing um, some support in this market. So we'll have to watch and wait for that. I don't know what just happened this morning, but we just had a sudden increase in bullishness. Dow is now down only 18 points this morning. We were looking for about a 40, 50 point decline, but something just occurred and um, we're only down about 18 points. So pretty flat open, it looks like uh, this morning that we may be pointing to. 
Let's take a look at T2122. T2122 is the four week new high, new low ratio. And I gotta tell you, this is one of my major concerns in the market. And that we are holding up here in this bearish reversal zone. And you can see, take this indicator back as far as you wanna take it. Go f as far back as you wanna go. And you're gonna find when we reach these high peak points, we usually see some selling. <coughs> We have had a period over here where we chose to hang out up here for a little while, just didn't want to sell off. So we could be seeing that situation again over here. This morning, um, you can see we, we've we rallied right back up here to that low area of this reversal zone. So we do have room to move on up here um, in the upside move. If those bears happen to come in, however, just notice we have a really big open space to the downside. Now this is certainly not suggesting that that has to occur, only that that potential exists that we may have stretched this rubber band a little bit too far, too fast, and that um, or more of a rest or consolidation has to occur um, in the market. So watch that closely. Then let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Our economic calendar does have a few things to say about how the market is going to perform. First, we have this morning the FOMC meeting beginning. Obviously, that's not going to produce any news right away, but we have the industrial production number coming out here at 915 market um, uh, housing market index coming out um, shortly after at 10 o'clock a.m and then treasury international capital at four i wouldn't expect um, this one to have much of an effect on uh, the market overall this uh, probably not going to be probably be a non-event but these two can certainly have um, an impact on the market depending on how those numbers come out what's been really interesting is in a um, a hoped for rate cutting environment our economic numbers continue to remain really strong as a matter of fact it's becoming more and more difficult to understand how the FOMC can justify a rate cut amidst so much strong economic data here in the U.S. So kind of an interesting situation that we're dealing with. And I guess the question that I want to, that just rattles around in my head, is what happens if the FOMC doesn't provide accommodation? With the oil prices and things like that, if they don't provide accommodation, what does that mean for our overall market? What would that do to current prices? Kind of a big question hanging out there right now. Uh, there's so much hopefulness that they will. What if they don't? because of such strong economic data out there? We'll have to wait and see. It'll be an interesting, um, interesting um, report for sure tomorrow afternoon. So with that, guys, let's take a look here. Um, before before I take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for the day, um, maybe if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could just click that subscribe button, do me a favor there, and also click that bell icon. Um, I would truly, truly appreciate it. You know, these videos are not meant to predict anything in the market. They're to help you take a look at the issues, the things that may be affecting the market overall and give you um, hopefully a little bit clearer perspective as to how you want to approach the market for the day. If you find these helpful, please do me a favor and click those thumbs up buttons. Leave a comment. That means the world to me, guys. You are directly responsible for our growth, and I want to thank you so much for everyone who does that. So with that, let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. Yesterday during the Rightway Options live session, we, we ran into several stocks that were looking pretty darn good. Now, BBBY is holding up and producing a bit of a inverted head and shoulders type pattern here. Nice bullish candle here on the day now the negative on this obviously is still the price resistance above we have the price resistance above we also if we look at our moving averages we're still below our 50-day moving average that can provide some resistance in this chart 
But right now, overall, this is actually a pretty darn good pattern and suggesting some higher moves could soon uh, come here in BBY. Might want to keep an eye on that. This is the first higher low in a while, so we might want to watch that pretty closely um, as this trend maybe begins to develop. Another chart, <clears throat> all of a sudden I'm drawing a blank, but <clears throat> another chart that popped up yesterday looking pretty good <clears throat> was Macy's. Now Macy's is still one of those charts coming up in this downtrend and it is longer term in the downtrend. But Macy's has had this really nice little rally off of this double bottom down here, rallying up and is holding right above this price support. That's a key element right there, holding above that price support. If this could rally, I could certainly see this bumping right on up in here toward that 50-day moving average to test that as resistance. So there may be an opportunity for a short-term move here in Macy's to the upside. Watch that pretty closely. Pretty decent looking chart overall. Another chart that you're, we're going to want to um, keep an eye on <clears throat> whoops, is UPS. Now UPS could have an effect today because FedEx is reporting this afternoon. But UPS has been holding up in this nice trend and just crawling right up. This is that black line is the eight exponential moving average. We call that the T line here, hit run candlesticks and right way options, trigger line. And we've just been climbing the T line here, breaking out through this resistance. And the reason I'm bringing this up today <clears throat> Depending on how FedEx reports, we could see a positive or negative effect here in UPS. So kind of keep an eye on that um, today as um, that reports this afternoon. But holding up really well, holding up in its trend, looking pretty good overall. There's some uh, really, <clears throat> well, some opportunity here that could set up if that continues to hold. Might want to take a look at a chart like CVS. CVS has been holding up in a nice trend, moving up nicely, now getting this nice little pullback. This is a uh, a setup that we call a PBO or a pullback opportunity when the stock's holding up in its trend and we're waiting to see if buyers are going to step in here and turn this back, or back around to the upside. So watch that closely. CVS, certainly worthy of being on a list. FE would be another this is a utility that has just been climbing, 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 and moved up, pulling back, and maybe providing that opportunity here again for some more upside moves. So keep an eye on FE. FE is looking pretty good overall. Costco may be one that could be setting up a failure here. Unfortunately, Costco dropping here pretty substantially, consolidating over here toward the right, and now showing a bit of a bearish pattern here in the chart. Not quite what I would, this wouldn't be a textbook evening star type pattern, but certainly not bullish overall. And if we get some sellers in here, I would look for uh, Costco maybe to come back and test that 50 day moving average. So watch for that. There could be some failure uh, showing up here if you're looking for a short trade. Facebook is also one of those charts that I would be watching pretty closely as a possible failure. We've created kind of a double top high along the 50 day moving average. And with all the pressure from the federal government right now looking into um, the, the antitrust uh, situation, we could have some problems here in Facebook. If you take a look, there's a trend and we're kind of breaking down that trend here just a little bit. So watch this closely. If this begins to stumble and fall, there could be some short trading going on in here. Watch, watch that pretty closely. Target. Target has been holding up really, really well over there overall, and it looked like it had an opportunity to maybe break through here, but now it's showing a little bit of weakness. We'll have to see if this can pick back up off of this level of support in this chart and, and hold in here. After this big bullish move up, there could be a little bit of back and forth in this chart before it continues to move on higher, but certainly worth keeping an eye on overall. PBYI. 
right, PBYI is a chart that I have an alert on. This is what we call a rounded bottom breakout pattern. A rounded bottom breakout is when a stock has been in a severe decline, really gets oversold in the short term, rallies back above its 50 day moving average, holds as support. And you can see that bullish engulfing candle coming in here yesterday. My price alert right in here um, on this chart. I'm watching this fairly closely. And then what I'd be looking for is this to just kind of make that slow move up toward that 200 day moving average uh, following through and maybe even filling this gap eventually. So uh, keep an eye on PBYI. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day and I want to wish you great profits. Once again, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, make sure you can click that subscribe button. And thank you to everyone who does click those thumbs up and leaves a comment. Um, really helps uh, in growing this channel. You guys are directly responsible for that. I try to put out good quality content. It It's you guys that create the growth. So thank you so much for everyone who takes the time to do that. I want to wish you all the best and we'll talk to you all bright and early Wednesday morning. Have a great day.